Hi, hello and welcome. You know why you're here, so let's get into it straight away. I have mentioned in my previous video that Asset in Affinity Designer is just a beefed up version of a stamp brush from Procreate. And as much as it is kind of true, the assets are so much more than just a brush. It's an entire illustration that you can reuse over and over, change it in every way possible, create variations of it and save them. And it also combines with effects like outline and drop shadow if you want to retain them. Okay, great. But how do you create assets? Well, easy. You just have to remember a couple of things. So let's head over to Affinity Designer. We're going to create a new document and I will work on A4 in horizontal orientation. And I will switch off the margins from the canvas. There you go. Now choose black for the outline and remove the color from the fill. Just swipe up. And now we're going to increase that size to about three millimeters with pencil selected and you can adjust the rope stabilizer to fit your needs i will draw a quick mountain and if you want to learn how to draw mountains for your fantasy map you can check that video over here so let's begin from the outline and don't worry about how uniform the line looks at the moment because in affinity designer you can always go into the line itself and that's just how it behaves. So if we wanted to make it very, very thin, we can adjust it with the thick ending or we can adjust the overall width of the line as well. Let me go back to it. So with three millimeters, all I want to do is slightly taper that line down. Like so. And then again, I want to do the same with this line, but I need to change the tool to selection to do that. Now, you do have to remember which side you started to draw the line because those nodes will affect the start of the line and the finish of the line. So if you drew it from right to left, they will be the opposite sides, like so. See, that's the beginning because we started the beginning from the right and the ending is super thick because this is actually our end node. The last one to change is the top one and I'm gonna slightly taper the beginning and the end of it. And you can add extra nodes if your lines don't look like you want them to. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do when we scroll here, because the thickness of this line is so much bigger than the taper of this one, I am going to choose the node tool and I'm slightly going to move that node away from the line so it doesn't cross over. And I'm going to repeat the same here with this node. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks. So for now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight all of the layers here and you can either select the top one and then with two fingers tap the bottom one and then it will select all of them or you can select them one by one with the top one selected you just scroll right on the next object that you want to select and with that I'm going to group all of that as an outline this will ensure that the same thickness of the line will be grouped together so I don't have to worry later on if I do want to resize the last thing I want to do is go into the stroke menu and turn on scale with object. Now this is very important, especially if you're planning on creating your assets to be used across different projects, because if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you want those lines also to shrink and expand with the size of the asset itself. If you don't do that, you might end up with the weird results. And I try to show you what I mean by that. So I created this asset of a bell. If I add this to the canvas, it looks great as it is. However, because those lines have not been selected to scale with the object, if I make it bigger, and I put the finger down so it expands with proportions on both ends, you can see that the black shape doesn't really align with the bottom edge of the bell itself, and the outline line of the bell hasn't changed the size I can make it smaller and I make it bigger and the outline remains the same. 
However, if I take the original picture, and I have it grouped here, but I'm just gonna change all of that to scale with the object and ensure that the rest of it also scales with the object as well. What I can do now is I can highlight the entire thing and if I do scale it, everything scales with the size of it. Now, obviously you can still change the size of the original elements if you want so. So if I do decide that this outline is actually too thick to my liking, I can go into the stroke and I can adjust this. With this obviously comes problem of expanding other shapes to ensure there's no gaps in between them. There are also other ways to sort this, but for now let's stick with the simple shapes like so. So this way it will shrink and expand with the size of the image itself. So if I'm gonna try to make it very small again, that outline will shrink and it will stay in proportion with the entire picture as well. Okay, so now that we understand the importance of keeping the line work as scalable with the object, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn that on and ensure that each of those lines is turned on as well, and it is. And now I can create the thinner lines that will be the middle of the mountain itself. So go back to the pencil and don't worry because we can go back into the stroke menu and adjust that size again. So we were working with three millimeters thickness. However, I do wanna adjust that curve to be a bit different. So I'm gonna reset that to monoline and then I'm gonna change the beginning because remember we started from the bottom. So I'm gonna reduce the beginning of it and align it like so. And again, you wanna make sure that the scale with object is turned on. Because I've used the same size of this line, I will keep it grouped inside everything else. Now with the sidelines, I will use a smaller size. So again, we're going to use pencil and we're just going to add those sidelines for our mountain to make it look less flat and more 3D. I will slightly change that to about two and a half millimeters, maybe even less, let's try two. And because we had that curve previously adjusted, it does remember the settings. Again, make sure that the scale with object is on and we can deselect it to ensure that all of that side lines here align perfectly. If not, you can use the node tool to select that line and then adjust the node as you see fit. I'm happy with that and because those are different size, I am going to group them separately. So we have the outline and then the middle lines. Now, this will also scale with objects so that group will be adjusted as and when we resize the entire thing. But now the last thing that I wanna do is add those very thin lines just to make that mountain look slightly better and more filled with texture. So I'm going to pencil again and I'm just going to create little lines like so. And again, don't worry if you don't like how the line looks like because we will be adjusting it here. So I want those ones to be tapered both on the beginning and the end of the line. And I want them to be the thinnest of the mold. So I'm gonna change that size to 1.2 millimeters. Now I'm gonna create some more lines to fill that entire mountain. Now what we're going to do we're going to highlight all of them. And again, with the top one selected, you can use two fingers to highlight them all and show that this scale with object is on and I'm going to group them all together and bring that group by holding and dragging to the bottom. So now we have the outline, which is different thickness, the middle lines, which is again, different thickness, and then the tiny lines that are the thinnest of them all. Now with all of those groups, I can group them again together. So entire mountain is now grouped. So with the entire group selected, we can now go into the asset menu. And I already have my mountains created, but for the purpose of this video, I will create a new group. So you click on that three lines and add 
category. You can name it the way you want. I'm just gonna put test and you'll have it blank. So this is your folder of all the assets that you will want to add to that group. You can also create subgroups, so like folder within a folder to ensure that you have all categories and all the file types together in your asset group. So click on the three lines again and add subcategory. And here you go, that's created now. If you click on the three menus below, you can add asset from selection, which we're going to do that, or you can rename it. You can also rename it later if you want based on the assets that you include in the current selection. So in this case, I will add it from the selection and you can't really see it because it's black on very dark gray. But if I click on that, I can insert or delete the asset that we just created. In this case, I want to test it. So I'm going to insert that one. And with the move tool, you can see that it added extra mountain that we had created previously. With this one now, I can resize it. And if I hold the finger, it will allow me to resize it differently. If I let go, it will keep the proportions together. And because we've switched on that scale with object function, it does now scale with the size of the mountain itself. And all of the lines remain proportionate with each other. Now let's switch them off and let me show you how to create effects. Okay, so for this purpose, I'm going to use the asset of the trophy. So there's nothing special about it. There's just some um, highlights and shadows of it. But again, I can scale it and the proportions and the line work remains exactly the same. We're going to add a bit of an outline to it. So we go to effects, outline. I don't want it to be black. Let's put it as a very dark blue. I'll increase the size of it to fill in all the empty space. Let's say 60 pixels should be enough. Fantastic. In your effect menu, you have to remember to put that scale with object on. If not, that 60 pixel will remain whether you make that picture very tiny or huge. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So we have that one now and I will scale it up. You see how this reduces and if I scale it down, again, it will create a massive outline on a very tiny picture. Let's go back. Let's scale with the object. And now if we resize it, you will retain the exact spacing and the exact proportions of the outline itself. So it will constantly have the same distance based on the size of your item for the effects and for the shape itself. Now, even though we've created it as an asset, I can always go inside of the shape itself and change whatever I want. So for example, if I decide that I want to make this trophy instead of yellowish orangey into a green one, I can go into the color, choose the fill color and change it to green. Now, in some cases where the items are grouped, it will not reach out inside the group itself. It will only change the color of the top shape itself. So in this case, this is the body of the trophy itself. And when I changed the color, unfortunately, it didn't go inside the highlights. But you can always open that group, highlight both of them and choose the same color that we were playing with. Obviously, for the highlights, you might not want to change them or you might want to change the color to something else. So in this case, instead of the same green, which it makes it disappear, I will change it to slightly lighter green to ensure that it goes with the overall look of the picture. So you can go inside into the shapes that you've created and stored as an asset, place them on your canvas and you can adjust absolutely everything that you want to adjust. If, for example, I want to change the lines, I can go and change them to red. I can even increase the size of them if I want to because I decide that they're actually too thin. Nothing stops me from amending 
everything about this illustration once I created it and added it from the asset menu. Right, so this is how you create assets, this is how you add them and segregate them into subcategories of your own choosing. You can rename them. You can also export category if you want to, for example, use the same assets on your laptop rather than on your iPad. If you decide to change something in your placed asset on your canvas like so, you can always go inside and with it selected, you can add a new variation to the same category of your assets. So I will add asset from selection. And as you can see, it does actually create a variation of that one with the outline already added to it and with the colors staying the same. And we can resize it. And again, that effect will scale down with the illustration itself. This way you can create arsenal of usable elements that you can reuse in your work or speed up your process of creating your illustrations or your maps. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. But that's it for today. So have a great time creating and I will see you in the next one. Bye.